the law of negligence, duty of care, property damage and personal injury. Duty of care refers to the circumstances and relationships which the law recognizes as giving rise to a legal duty to take care. A failure to take such care can result in the defendant being liable to pay damages to a party who is injured or suffers loss as a result of their breach of duty of care. The existence of a duty of care depends on the type of loss. Different legal tests apply to different types of losses. This video considers the law in relation to personal injury and property damage. The duty of care for personal injury and property damage was originally decided by Lord Atkins' neighbor test from Donahue v. Stevenson. The neighbor test for establishing a duty of care can be broken down into two requirements. Firstly, harm must be a reasonably foreseeable consequence of the defendant's action. This considers how likely harm will result if care is not taken. Secondly, there must be a relationship of proximity. This could be a close relationship for example parent, child, teacher, pupil or it could be proximity of time and space. For example road traffic accidents. A case example of where harm was reasonably foreseeable is Home Office v Dorset Yacht. It was foreseeable the young offenders would steal the boats if left unsupervised. Conversely a case example of where harm was not reasonably foreseeable is Top v London Bus. It was not foreseeable that thieves would steal the bus and kill a cyclist. The case of Borhill v Young demonstrates how the claim failed because the claimant was too far from the crash, so there was a lack of proximity. Prior to Donahue v Stevenson, a claimant would have to establish an existing duty relationship in order to be successful. The neighbor test taken in its widest sense could be very broad allowing liability in a whole range of situations. For example, teacher, pupil, doctor, patient, parent, child. However, subsequent cases narrowed down its application to only applying where a consumer was suing a manufacturer. In Anne's v Merton London Borough 1978, Lord Wilberforce sought to resurrect an all-embracing test for duty of care. Lord Wilberforce's two-stage test. Stage 1. Examine whether the harm was reasonably foreseeable and that there existed a relationship of proximity. If so, a prima facie duty of care arises. The defendant could then put forward policy considerations to negate liability. The first stage was essentially the elements of the neighbor test, however in order to address the fears of the floodgates, this was subject to the second stage which provided a get-out clause for defendants. Such policy reasons include fear of the floodgates and loss allocation. Despite the efforts to address fears of the floodgates, the ANS test was still considered too wide. In Caparo v Dickman, a claim against a firm of accountants, the House of Lords overruled ANS and returned to the incremental approach. The claimant may only bring their action where they can establish an existing duty situation. In novel situations the question of whether a duty of care is now subject to the Caparo test, Lord Bridges' three-stage test. 1. That harm was reasonably foreseeable consequence of the defendant's actions. 2. That there was a relationship of proximity. 3. That it is fair, just and reasonable to impose a duty of care. The first two stages are taken directly from the original neighbor test. Fair, just and reasonable relates to the same policy considerations under the ANS test. In fact, the Caparo test contains the same elements as ANS. The main difference is that under Caparo it is the claimant that must put forward policy reasons for imposing liability whereas under ANS, liability would arise once the claimant had established reasonable foresight and proximity and the defendant had to demonstrate policy factors for negating liability. A recent development in duty of care was established in Robinson v Chief Constable of West Yorkshire. The claimant, an elderly woman, was injured by a drug dealer escaping the police. This case established that where there is an established ground of liability such as personal injury or property damage, there is no need to apply the third stage of the Caparo test. This takes the law for personal injury and property damage back to the position established in Donahue v Stevenson and application of the neighbor test. To sum up, when answering legal problems in claims for personal injury and property damage, you only need to consider, 1. If harm is reasonably foreseeable and 2. Whether there is a relationship of proximity. 
This video is part of a series of videos on law from www.e-lawresources.co.uk. Check out our website which provides lecture outlines and case summaries. See also www.e-lawrevision.org.uk for revision. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel www.youtube.com slash at e-lawresources. It's free and helps us to keep providing these videos. Thanks for watching.